The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, my name is Jillian Schaefer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Get More from Your ERP with Integrated Spend Management, presented by Stanton Jandrell and Jesse Byam of Fraction. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our one survey question. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools, and support whenever you need it. We've invited Fraction here today because they are the industry experts on spend management. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Jesse. Thank you, Jolene. Uh, we're excited to be here. We appreciate this opportunity to uh, work with SWK. Uh, as you know, SWK is one of our uh, premier partners and we really appreciate the opportunity to present with them and talk to you about uh, our solutions. Uh, obviously today's, uh, we're looking at getting more out of your ERP with integrated spend management. And so that's what the focus will be. Uh, just a little introduction. Um, my name is Jesse Byam. I'm the VP of Sales and Partnerships here at Fraction. And I'll be presenting today, uh, co-presenting with Stanton Gendrell, our CEO, um, who has got well over 20 years of experience in the spend management space. And so uh, that depth and, and breadth of his knowledge is going to be uh, apparent as he talks today and shares with us some of these things. If you look at Fraction as a whole, and, and many of you may not know Fraction, um, if you remember from the old uh, Sage 100 days from previous, we were originally called eRequester in, in the US. Um, and we merged with a, our group out of South Africa a few years back to create Fraction. Um, so if you haven't heard of Fraction before, it's not that we're a new company. We've been around for a long time, uh, over 20 years. And you can tell by uh, the slide here that we have over a thousand organizations using our spend management solutions. And we're managing uh, well over 10 billion in spend annually through our, our application. And we have over 200,000 active users. And why that's important is, when you look at spend management solutions, you want to make sure that you've got a tried and true tested solution out there that the users um, have had a lot of input in making sure that it's functional, it works well, and it enhances their business. And, and that's because we sell mostly to ERP-based scenarios where we integrate to the ERP, um, having this number of users and all these organizations use it is critical. So when we talk about spend management, I think the first thing we need to talk about, Stan, is what is spend management and what does that refer to? Because people people kind of think about procurement or they think expense management, but they don't think spend management. So maybe expound on that for us. Great. Thanks, Jesse. And I assume that you're seeing my screen clearly at this point. I am. So spend management, yes, it can be confusing to some people and uh, it's probably worth spending a second or two on focusing on what spend management uh, is and what it isn't. So our definition of spend management is really to provide solutions that cover most of the indirect spending activities that take place in a business. And for us, that really focuses on procurement. It's the meat and potatoes of our value proposition, you know, how to deal with buying of goods and services. Uh, there's an element of AP automation, which is a strong part of spend management, and in some cases, organizations lead with AP automation. And that's really the process in terms of how we route invoices for approval, whether they link to POs or not, and get them back into your accounting solution. Another element of spend management, because we're trying to cover any kind of um, employee-initiated expenditure, is costs incurred by employees that need to be reimbursed. So expense reporting or expense management is an important element of spend management as well. When I need to be reimbursed for my meal, for my mileage trip, uh, we need a solution to be able to deliver that through an approval authorization process and ultimately either into your payroll provider or your ERP solution. 
And then bringing it together and trying to understand uh, and manage the data that is uh, created by these various solutions to identify savings opportunities, to identify areas of uh, better control from a vendor management perspective is spend analysis. How do we extract the data? How do we leverage it? How do we use it to optimize our internal processes? This combination or group of spending activities is what we refer to as spend management. And importantly, in, in our language, we talk about proactive spend management. And it's really trying to control as much of the spend that takes place in the business before it's incurred. Now, often uh, a lot of analytics and reporting is done post spending. In other words, budget variance reports and the like are the way a lot of organizations manage to budget. We're fundamentally trying to change that management behavior, but it's difficult to change it if you aren't in control of the spend. So from the time an individual in the organization wants to spend money, raises their hand to ask for that uh, spend to be incurred, it's at that point that Fraction wants to be able to capture, regardless of whether it's an invoice, a potential purchase order, or an expense report. We want to capture it at that point and route it through an appropriate auditable delegation of authority until ultimately the, dis the decision by the relevant manager who uh, has the capability of approving or authorizing that expenditure is made and provide that manager with all the tools needed to support his or her uh, process. So what we're talking about really is managing the entire requisition to PO process when it comes to purchasing, the request to approval process when it comes to expense reports, and the invoice re request or requisition all the way through to validation, approval, and feeding back into the underlying ERP system. So that process flow really focuses on capturing all the data around the intent to spend, approving that intent to spend, generating the required document for requisitions of uh, via purchase order, matching those processes once uh, that order has been generated, dealing with any kind of variances or policies that one might have, and then ultimately feeding it back into your Sage 100, Sage 300, uh, Acumatica accounting system. So those are the areas that we really focus on. So Jesse. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to, if you go back to that slide for just a second, the the key here is that this is where we take over from an ERP perspective and really enhance the ERP because this is where most of these ERPs either don't have the functionality to be able to provide this type or they're very weak in providing it. So being able to provide the visibility into where that is, being able to do those approval processes, being able to actually check your budget at the time of, of making, you know, making the request into approving a PO. Those are critical aspects of the business that a lot of the ERPs really fall short on where we enhance that process and make that uh, much stronger for you. But having that integrated at the ERP at specific areas really enhances that whole process and the ERP as a whole, which is you know aligned with our topic today of how do we really get more out of that ERP by adding these pieces to it and be able to control those processes and automate them. Yeah, Jesse, I mean, one could view this as an extension of your ERP system. So we're leveraging your current investments in ERP and extending it to every single person in the organization who needs to incur that spend. So often in most of our implementations, we tend to deploy in the tens or hundreds of users, even though the underlying ERP system might only have 10 or 20 or 30 users. So it's really about getting that to the edge of the organization. And I presume today's audience is going to be a user of uh, one of these three typical systems. Yeah, and I, I think integration is critical. I mean, I, and I think that we should spend some time on why that why that is critical and how that enhances the the overall performance of the system. Yeah, fantastic. Well, let, let's focus on some of the platforms that are supported by SWK that we've got very very tight integration into. And I'm going to talk at a more generic level, but towards the end of the presentation, when we have an opportunity for Q&A, if you're a Sage 300 user and you want to understand something specific about that app, or you're a Sage 100 or Acumatica user, you know, please feel free to ask. But I thought it might be quite useful just to paint a picture of how integration takes place and the full bi-directional uh, focus of integration uh, that we've embodied into a solution that we call Fraction Connect. 
And Fraction Connect is a solution that helps us bridge the challenges of connecting from a cloud-based procurement solution or spend management solution like ours to typically an on-premise or self-hosted uh, target ERP like Sage 100 or Sage 300. And it is different when we connect into an Acumatic environment because we have a series of APIs that are an Acumatic environment at any rate optimized for cloud to cloud communications. So how do we provide that level and benefit of cloud-based solutions into a target ERP system that might well be on premise? So Fraction Connect is our platform, which is in essence a web services server component, and then has a client component that is specific to either Sage 100 or into a Sage 300 environment that sits close to where your target ERP system is, either on your network or if you've got a hosted off site on that network. And that connect client then communicates to your underlying ERP system using uh, the APIs, so both in Sage 300 and Sage 100, and I'll focus on the uh, on-prem APIs. We connect, for instance, with Sage 100 uh, using, um, uh, I think it's called the uh, BPIs or BPO interface, um, and that collects important information that Fraction requires, your vendors your budgets, your uh, actuals, um, any other information that is pertinent for creating and managing a requisition. And when we finish a requisition, convert it into an order, match it against an invoice, have that invoice available for export, then pushing that uh, information directly back into Sage 100 and Sage 300. And when I talk pushing back, always through APIs, I think it's a very important differentiator with our platform is that it's API driven. And that provides us a massive amount of resilience as you uh, continue a journey of upgrading or adding new functionality into Sage 300 or Sage 100. Uh, that investment in the integration layer because it's done at an API level is fairly consistent. So I hope that's not too technical for, for today's uh, uh, discussion, but really wanted to sort of share the investment that has gone into uh, making sure that our cloud systems are tightly coupled and integrated with your underlying ERP system. So the left-hand side really talks about the core areas that we focus on around getting control, automating those workflows. So in solutions where, uh, specifically in the sort of Sage product set, where requisitions aren't particularly powerful or don't exist in some cases, we provide a lot of value into that environment and through that process, expose the data and the analytics to help you make the best possible decision. And the benefits of integration clearly are seen when it comes to making sure that there's no duplication of effort in getting that invoice from one system to another with no human intervention. And on the right hand side, we really talk about the value proposition to customers, you know, why you would want to implement these solutions. Jesse, not sure if you want to add anything to this slide. No, I just was, I, I think that when you're getting more out of your ERP, you're, you want to make sure that integration is providing value to your employees and that we're getting the right data to the right people at the point of decision. And so we're empowering those employees through data-driven uh, decision-making, you know, and, and I think you mentioned it earlier, you know, buyer behavior or just employee behavior. We want to make sure we shape that, but most of our employees want to do the right thing. They want to spend appropriately for the company. But when we don't give them the right data at the right time, it's very hard for them to make great decisions. You know, they, they're going off their gut instead of data driven. And so being able to put all that together so that the ERP with those budgets and, and budgets become critical, um, being able to, to see those and see where we're at the budget, not only what's been spent, but what's committed is critical for them to be able to make those choices. And I think that that's the key in making your ERP really talk to these and give people the information they need without having to have them delve deep into the ERP to get that information. Yeah, and I think the savings opportunities are very clear. If we look on this overall slide of purchasing, maybe you want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Deloitte's findings here. Yeah, and actually this was kind of an epiphany for me in the last little while. You know, Deloitte kind of, you know, put out there that 63% of companies are implementing solutions they aim to reduce costs. And we see that based on everything that's going on in the economy and everything that's happened around that. You know, people are very, very focused on cost reduction. And I, but I think most businesses are. Um, the epiphany for me was, yeah, lots of people are trying to save costs and they want to reduce costs. But the reason that they're struggling is because they don't have visibility. And what about the other, you know, 40% of the companies that aren't looking to reduce costs? They, they're looking to spend more. They need to spend more. 
but the problem becomes visibility, being able to make data-driven decisions and be able to control your spend. And that's what, what this is, is about is, yes, we'd love to be able, everybody would love to be able to run their businesses on a reduced cost for sure. But the only way to do that and the only way to succeed in business is to have visibility and control and be able to follow those processes and make sure that you're making the right decisions and that everybody's accountable to those decisions. I mean, Jesse, yeah, it, it's so interesting to see the impact of uh, more remote work on this particular area when you're talking about data visibility. I mean, one of the many, many challenges that our customer base and prospects are facing at the moment is you know, transaction now touches many, many people. You know, someone wants it. There's managers that have to approve or authorize. Uh, there's people who need to generate orders. There's people who need to receive. Uh, there's the AP team. And in a lot of instances, uh, these people are now highly distributed. So tools that uh, enable purchasing management across the space of people that might be in 10, 20, 30, 40 locations now becomes really important. And, and clearly purchase management is a, a strong focus of any kind of spend management system. I'm it, not going to go too deep in here because we've got an opportunity to show this in action during the demo. Yeah. And I think I think you hit that on the head. You you talk about these companies and they're all about empowering staff to work remotely, empowering staff to make great decisions, you know, accelerating the process and, and giving people access to the data and I think that these type of solutions really do have a very powerful effect in an organization when they're implemented properly and in conjunction with DRP. Correct. Well, I mean, one of the big drivers that we try to bring to an organization is just much more effective approval flows and the benefits that uh, arise from that. So auditability of transaction is actually super important. But how many organizations, before we engage with them, Jesse, look at, you know, paper-based systems, Excel spreadsheets, requisition forms, uh, or generating a PO and then having printing a PO that requires five people to sign off be able, uh, before being able to send that through to a vendor. So automating those approval processes in this highly distributed environment uh, is hugely benefit, beneficial. And making sure that if someone is out of the loop for whatever reason, they're off, off ill, they're out of office, uh, they're just tardy. You know, how do we make sure that those requisitions uh, continue on their journey now in a more automated way? Um, well, and I think McKinsey and company really nailed it. You know, if you look at the stat there, 60% of occupants could save 30% of their time with automation. You know, everything that's happened in the last year, if you look at the companies we talked to, the transition to remote workers and the inability to get to the office has really, really showcased for these companies where their problems are and where their bottlenecks are and, and where these paper-based and you know Excel-driven um, systems have gotten them in trouble where they weren't able to, to quickly shift and get those approval workflows in place. Um, you know, and it highlighted for them, you know, the risks of not having these things automated and having remote capability and the ability to get, you know, this access to data anywhere that they are on any device. So it, it really is, if you look at cost savings, not having an automated system attached to your, to your ERP for, for purchasing and for these workflows makes a massive, massive difference. Yeah, it absolutely does. And, you know, the flip side of this all obviously is that, uh, um, in, invoices still need to be paid. Um, however, invoices now get sent to uh, office locations where there possibly aren't people. And multiple parties that used to be sitting next to each other in the AP department used to be responsible for the release process, the appropriate matching and segregation of, of duties to manage risk more effectively uh, you know, don't exist anymore. So we think invoice approval is one of those areas uh, that is absolutely ripe for elements of automation. Well, in segregation of duties, when you when you hit that, you're right. We did see a breakdown in a lot of those companies that didn't have these their invoice approval system automated. Really did have a breakdown in their segregation of duties, which obviously exposes them to risk. And we want to make sure that we eliminate that. Yep, absolutely. I mean, the benefits are enormous. But let's talk a little bit about expenses. Um, you know, in spend management, we we spend a lot of time talking about let's getting uh, how do we get an order generated effectively and how do we pay the vendor effectively. But uh, expenses can be uh, very significant, and the kind of expenses uh, that we've seen uh, 
been processed on our expense management platforms has changed significantly. You know, just six months ago, it was primarily around taking customers out for meal or extensive travel, getting to see customers and the like, and uh, or conference costs, and, and that's completely eliminated. So COVID has done us a favor in terms of baselining uh, expense management costs, but we're now seeing a whole slew of costs associated with employees having to orientate themselves to work from home. Um, and in environments where they don't have an automated expense management system, once again, it's super challenging to get that monitor approved, that new laptop in, uh, involved or approved, or your new office desk. Um, love to hear some of your thoughts on that particular area as well. Well, and it's, it is interesting, you know, if you look at expense management as a whole, it's, it is the one area where, you know, a change in behavior from your employees can make a massive difference. And you know, this is an opportunity for companies to really change and, and, and implement new change because the things that are being requested, the way that we're doing the requisitioning, you know, and this expensing is changed in, in the COVID environment or just in general with the economy and, and this desire for more remote workers. So companies should be looking at this and saying, hey, here's a chance for us to set our policies to get them up and, and running, and two, to enforce them. Um, policy compliance becomes a, a big component of this, and, and you can you can curb what I call, you know, what we term either maverick or rogue spending, where people are just spending, you know, willy-nilly, and then you're not seeing those invoices or you're not seeing those expenses for, you know, 30 to 60 days, so you have no idea where you're at in your budget. Instead, when you have a, a system like this, you're able to control that and see instantly kind of what's going on so you can control and see what's going on, you know, and, and two, you're right, the way that employees are buying, the things they're buying, they're different, they're changing. You know, some of those are, are much bigger ticket items, so having visibility early is key. Absolutely, and uh, one of the things we want to avoid in these kind of environments is employees being out of pocket for a particularly long time. So the ability to uh, support expenses on a more regular basis than once a month, uh, we're seeing is, is coming through very quickly. Uh, this other huge trend may be driven significantly by work from home and people needing to get goods or services delivered directly to their houses. Uh, punch out. I'm just seeing an absolute explosion in punch out. And for those of you who aren't familiar with punch out, it is the ability through an automated system like Fraction to navigate to a punch out enabled vendor. Let's use Amazon as a great example. And look through their website, uh, choose the items or goods that you want to purchase, and instead of paying for them once you've added them to your cart, submitting them back into your requisition, getting the requisition now with all this rich data directly from Amazon, uh, approved and authorized, and then once approval has taken place, automatically releasing those goods for delivery from, from Amazon. And so this whole online purchasing and more a more user-friendly experience around purchasing, including catalogs, which are self-managed versions of this, I suppose. Uh, we're seeing a big drive. Um, interestingly, the last couple of demos uh, that I've been doing and been involved in, I've had uh, clients categorically tell me that, hey, we're not interested in having to fill out a manual or an automated requisition form anymore. You know, by and large, we're happy and we think that there's significant savings opportunities for these guys to either buy from a catalog that we would manage or for them to browse and go into Amazon and buy directly from that environment. Well, so big I, changes there. Yeah, massive. And, and it's true. I don't think there's a demo that we're doing now that doesn't involve a vendor that people want to be able to connect to and automate that purchasing process. Um, it just is the future of where everything's going. You know, in fact, we're doing a, a Amazon presentation next week with Amazon on how our system integrates with them. But if you want to derive a lot of value and be able to control your vendor costs, it's it's a great way to do it. Now, the question always comes up, Stanton, is we talk about Amazon, but are there other vendors that can uh, also be on that platform? So we might as well answer that question now. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. If you look at those Gartner stats where they reckon 75% of uh, B2B purchases are going to be via uh, marketplaces of some type, that's an enormous shift in the traditional relationships that we have. And, and to your point, Jesse, yeah, I mean, Amazon is not the only vendor that offers uh, punch out capabilities. I think we have about 36 vendors that we've already connected to, and they can be your stock standard staples, they can be McKesson, Granger, 
uh, depending on the industry type that you're in, there's by and large the leaders in this uh, in the space in terms of vendors have recognized the changing landscape and are quickly creating environments where they are fully punch out enabled. But you know, maybe this is one that we leave for the demo to show you just how easy it is to utilize punch out and incorporate that into a B2B buying experience. Perfect. The accountants love this, budget and risk management. And in fact, uh, you know, often people think this is a slightly boring subject and uh, I'm, I'm different here. This is one that really excites me. You know, one of, the, one of the goals in Fraction has always been to get things right and uh, to maintain accountability. In fact, it's entrenched into our value system. And what, we've, what we strive to do when we've delivered product you know, creating a very simple product for people to be able to use, it's friendly to use, is to go to that theme that you were talking about earlier, Jesse, of empowerment. We want to give managers the tools, and in fact users of the product, uh, the requisitioners themselves, the tools to be able to make the most commercially competent decision that they can make. And what does that mean for an organization? Well, where you've got budgets, whether they're project budgets, whether they're GL budgets, you want to make sure that your employees are spending according to those budgets and that your managers have visibility of that budget information before they hit yes to approve that spend. But overarching this environment is a recognition that not all managers do the right kind of thing because, hey, you're human. So some people just approve without digging too deeply. And so a structured system of managing risk in the business, making sure that people do in fact comply with budgetary constraints that we put in, make sure that they're buying from the vendors that we want, making sure that transactions uh, aren't being split to uh, subvert the delegation of authority or the approval limits that we've established becomes very, very important. And you know, I'll touch a little bit on um, our active policy management during the demo. But it does sound like this is increasingly getting uh, a more significant uh, sort of headspace in managers, especially in these times of extensive remote work. And I think the informed decision is the key here. And I think, you know, your next slide is going to really hit on that. But making informed decisions and empowering people through data really is that component that helps them to get those pieces done properly. Um, Obviously, we have the audit trails um, and those pieces, but if you hit that next slide around spending analytics. Yeah, there we go, our budget insights. Yeah. So what do we mean by spend analytics, as Jesse was saying? Well, the, you know, there's elements of risk management we want to be able to provide. And if you've got great eyes, because my screen is very close to me, you'll see another tab there called risk analytics. But at the very least, we want to be able to give people insight at the point time of making of the decision, which we call point of decision analytics, uh, an idea about what the financial impact is. What is the budget? What have they got available? But importantly, what commitments have already been incurred in the business that might impact that budget that you need to be aware of? What other requests are floating around that may get approved that impact that budget? All of that we want to be able to provide to users in a real-time environment. So uh, Jesse can't underestimate the budget uh, or the importance of that budget insights and the analytical uh, reporting. So we spent a tremendous amount of time bolstering our analytics. You know, one of the challenges in a ERP system when we uh, try to identify proper spending patterns is this inability to get to item level uh, uh, transactional information. And for a lot of our clients, they struggle even to get the basics. You know, what are our top 10 vendors in a particular spend category? Uh, they can't do that because they're not categorizing vendors appropriately or the items that they're buying aren't appropriately categorized. So it's very challenging to get that out. And then even worse is that where AP is your primary data set for spending information, often when invoices are captured uh, prior to implementation of a solution like ours, they're capturing totals, not item level uh, descriptions. So it just removes users further and further from getting down to item level analytics. And so that's a one key area that we've focused on in, in Fraction, getting it right from a reporting perspective, making sure that all the underlying data we need to do everything from advanced projections and forecasting to basic 
ABC spend analysis or identify what your top 10 vendors by category are out of the box and easily capable. And it sounds like there's great stats to support why this is important in the business. Yeah, and I don't think anybody would argue with those stats, but that gives us, you know, people can, you can see the size of the ROI when you start to deliver these type of analytics to your people. And I think that gives you a nice little lead in here to, you know, one of our new things coming up. Yep. So insights, uh, well, perhaps just stepping back a, a second, you know, Fraction tries to make data available at the right point for the right kind of role in the business. And traditionally, we focus very heavily on the approval authorization structure. And you saw some of those reports, uh, and I'll expand on that in the demo again. But more importantly, roles that uh, are responsible for managing, for instance, vendor relationships, uh, roles like finance managers that are interested in how long it takes for spending to take place in the business and where is that concentrated and with which vendors and you know where do we find savings opportunities where there's a mismatch between items being bought from one person in terms of cost to another person uh, in the same supply and so that data is completely available in fraction but often quite tough to get and so we're very proud to announce the first incorporation of embedded analytics into our application uh, that makes sure that as a vendor, you don't need to go buy a new Power BI module. You don't need to buy a click for you. You know, don't need to invest fifty thousand dollars in SciSense or Exagia. You know, Fraction are starting to, uh, we're delivering actionable insights, is what we call it, um, into our application. Effective dashboarding that gives an individual a view of uh, the impact of their own contribution towards costs, and then role-based dashboards that provide AP managers a very clear idea of, you know, where they're going to breach whatever internal SLAs they might have around paying vendors or identifying which vendors typically uh, are always out of tolerance or variance when it comes to the POs. So role-based uh, analytics and the ability to analyze data at an item level is an absolutely key part of Fraction. And we're very proud of the, the work that we're doing in this environment. And it really, really enhances uh, the information that is partially stored on your ERP system. More data is obviously stored within a Fraction perspective when it comes to the buying patterns. And we bring these all together uh, with our new BI tools. So very excited about these new functions that are coming out into the product. And we'll continue to enhance it. We've got our first iterations coming out in Q1 of the dashboarding. Uh, we want to get in, into advanced fraud analytics into Q2. In other words, understanding everything from number distribution to invoice distributions to where potential areas for fraud exist. All of this will be launched through our insights platform. So very excited about the potential this brings to the business. And maybe just uh, before we start, uh, we kick off with a demo component and I recognize we got to this halfway point here, Jesse. Uh, mobility. Now the stats here are, uh, are stunning and I think um, you know, this pandemic has exposed a completely new paradigm of how offices are going to work in the future. I, I think you're exactly right. The way that we view the traditional workspace is changing rapidly. Um, you know, these these stats at 25 to 30 percent of workforce we work from home uh, probably is going to end up being potentially low. Um, so, with that type of increase, you have to have the ability to to give people access to these applications in your ERP. Um, remotely and so giving people access to the ERP remotely is very difficult and that's where our solutions like ours really do enhance the ERP and allow people to interact with the data without having to you know be part of the ERP system and so uh, when you look at a mobility perspective it is it is critical and you know if you don't have mobility and you don't have the ability to access these systems from anywhere on any device um, that's that's a risk and it's a problem and so you know, we're seeing a tremendous, tremendous push from our clients to continue to enhance the mobility features within our system. Well, I mean, it's so interesting. The evolution of this sort of mobile view is for a long time, business apps, uh, specifically spend management apps, uh, when it came to the procurement aspects, uh, were never really viewed as art of uh, sort of tech that needed to be available on really uh, a multitude of devices. 
And so when we delivered our solution, we recognized that this was likely to change and we created uh, one of the first mobile responsive UIs in a spend management solution, which basically meant that if you were on your PC or on your tablet, it was the same application that recognized the size of your device and sized itself uh, dynamically to accommodate that. But I suppose from uh, the influence and perspective of the expense management solutions that were used to people not having a tablet, having a relatively small phone, you know, we've seen a, a, a big push to having spend management available on smaller and smaller devices. And so in recognition of this, we've launched our mobile applications natively as apps on both Android and iOS. And here I'm particularly proud of the UI work that the team has done. It is absolutely world-class. If you compare us to competitors uh, across the board, even the high-end enterprise competitors like Cooper and Jager, uh, absolutely no comparison here. The work that has gone into our mobile app to create the most user-friendly experience on a phone for approving purchase requisitions, for raising requisitions, for capturing expense items is just absolutely superb. And uh, if you as a, uh, as a Sage 100, Sage 300, Acumatica user are looking for an effective solution uh, to enable people who don't necessarily have access to PCs all of the time to be able to participate in the spending uh, process or the approvals process, uh, then I'm, I'm very certain you're going to be very pleased with our mobile applications. Right, well, we have all these slides as we end uh, the presentation portion usually include uh, a, a great comment from uh, one of our clients and we found this particular one to be incredibly prescient and this is a, an organization uh, that is a large university, very large campus, and literally overnight went from this massive campus environment to uh, work from home. And uh, you know, their comments saying that, and it was particularly useful because they just completed the implementation of Fraction. Um, their comments were that if they hadn't implemented the system, uh, because there was quite a lot of laboratory brying in this uh, university environment, would have absolutely collapsed their systems. So uh, some great endorsements from customers uh, around how spend management has allowed them to weather uh, the very rapid changes brought on. All right, Jesse, any comments before I kick off on uh, the demo? No, I, I think we've covered it off quite well. I, I think we're excited to see how this all interfaces and works. Um, you know, and, and obviously the punch out capability and the catalog capability, I think are a big key here. So we're excited to see that part of the demo. I can see your screen now that you've logged into the system. Great. So, so Jesse, um, I think in today's screen, I'm not gonna do a ton of work in terms of the architecture. I wanna really give people a look and feel about how the system works from creating a request. And then I'm gonna show people the kind of information that's available when you approve or authorize a request. So, you know, Fraction as a spend management solution has many modules that are configured uh, uh, for each customer. So you can see some of these on the left. We'll focus today really on purchasing, but expense claims and a variety of other spending activities are available. And if I want to buy, I mean, clearly we can buy in the traditional form of creating a requisition uh, uh, from scratch. Uh, and that's sort of relatively easy to do. So we'll do, you know, give you an idea about what that looks like. Um, and we give a request a title and then we can go create, you know, for instance, a request to buy a laptop or whatever the case might be, would prompt me to capture a whole lot of information and possibly a whole lot of allocation info. But you know, what we're seeing more and more is users expecting and demanding a more consumer friendly environment. And to do that, we've created concepts of catalogs and catalogs allow us then to have a much more graphical uh, UI to be able to select items. We can have our own stores. These are internally managed catalogs. We can have our own data sets. You can navigate to them in any way. And so in this environment, I wanna buy an epoxy wood lamp because like who wouldn't want an epoxy wood lamp in the middle of a pandemic? And you'll see that the user interface is very similar to a lot of the websites where you can have a look and see an expanded view of the items, navigate through multiple panes to see the items, uh, get a whole lot of information, simply add these to your requisition. 
super easy and powerful ways in which to be able to raise a requisition. But then more and more of our customers, as I said before, have looked at online marketplaces as being the way that they want to engage with their vendors. And so as a fraction user, I want to be able to go navigate and look at, for instance, buying from a vendor like Amazon or Staples or Granger. Well, I just click on their websites directly from the application. It navigates me directly through to uh, the underlying website. Now you'll notice a slightly different view for Amazon. So when you use a business account um, and you utilize our fraction spend management solution, you get directed to a website which is Amazon business website. And this allows you, for instance, to negotiate terms with Amazon. Can you believe it? You can get 30 days, you can get invoice payments here. There's a variety of benefits. It also allows you to save somewhere between one and 5% on the cost of typical business items that you buy. So if I wanna buy, for instance, a laptop in this environment, I have absolutely the same kind of experience that I would have. I can go say, well, I wanna buy a uh, Amazon's Choice and Aspire laptop. So drill down onto that, make the selections and the choices that I want. And you know, if I'm happy with that, I can simply add it to my cart. Um, I'm not gonna add any of the protection plans, uh, but now we've added an item to our cart, I can continue to shop, or I can simply go look at my cart have a look at the items that are there and say, yep, this is the item that I want to be able to purchase. And by uh, connecting into Amazon's punch out capability, it extracts all the data that's available for me um, and populates my requisition with that data. And I can add anything to it. I can sort of punch out, I can say, well, what is my approval routing I want for this? And you know, where do I want it uh, delivered if we have multiple choices? and add other items from other vendors and submit for approval. And by submitting for approval, our system then taps into our routing engine. Um, I've got a request that's in a, an approval state here already and notifies a user, um, the next one that's available in that approval routing group that has been pre-configured that they've got a request to approve. They'll get an in-app notification they'll get uh, an email notifying them that they've got to approve or authorize a request. And this is a sort of the manager's view of a transaction. And here you can see that it's for some inbound marketing. You can see the details of this transaction. It's allocated to a particular project. We can see that there's some alerts. So that goes to talking around how our system helps drive either speedily uh, processing a transaction in the app or when we're gonna get over budget. And we can see that the is a budget notification. And so I probably want to drill down and have a look at what the budgetary impact of this transaction is. And we can see that there's a budget, uh, we can see what the budget is, we can see the spending patterns over time, we can see in a real-time environment what I've got in a create state, what I've got in a closing state. And likewise, we can do risk analytics to understand whether the spend falls into the normal patterns we would expect uh, for this uh, <coughs> marketing spend. And we can drill down into the vendor information to see you know, how much are we spending with software advice? What's up most we spent with them? And uh, yep, well, a fair amount of spend that's gone with software advice. I can see what the employee's been spending uh, patterns over the last while. And that approval group, uh, I can see what the spending patterns are there. And that's the kind of information that I would need to be able to approve or authorize that requisition. So really trying to get deep insight into that. And when we spoke about insight, we spoke a little bit about analytics and I wanted to show you just briefly some of the analytics that are available in the system. So if I wanted to, for instance, drill down into all my expenses in the business, I could load up all that data, I could see the information uh, about where it's coming from, who it's with, I can filter it in any way that I want. I can expand on these uh, graphs and I can drill deeper into it. I could say I wanna focus only on distance or mileage requests and just the capability of quickly drilling down into all that information uh, using our embedded analytics makes for a very, very powerful uh, integrated solution. So uh, I think that was all I really wanted to show in terms of sort of look and feel um, in terms of the demo component. So at this point, uh, Jess, I'm not sure if there's anything else that you wanted to add to today's discussion, anything you want me to elaborate on. Uh, else, I'm happy to take uh, any kind of questions from the audience today. 
No, I think that you've covered off uh, a lot of that really, really well. And that quick demo gave us a, a good view into what we can do and the power of the system. I, I think some of the keys here is understanding from an architectural standpoint that this is a cloud first product and it is uh, hosted on the Microsoft Azure platform. And so from an uptime perspective, you, we do benefit from the infrastructure that Microsoft provides with that 99.9999% uptime um, and, and capabilities. And so this system is built uh, structurally to be very sound. And this goes to the, the years of experience we have in this marketplace and the maturity of the product, uh, which I think you displayed very well today. Um, after 20 years and listening to our users, we really get to the meat and potatoes of, of what makes companies run and how to make them run better. And so I think that that's just a, a key piece we wanna highlight there. Fantastic. Yep. And the other issue that uh, I didn't expand on in the demo because it does become a bit complex to show in a relatively short period of time is just this, what we refer to as in-app uh, customization. The ability to add information sets to a requisition form to uh, the data that we extract in the reporting uh, so that it is in effect customized for an organization. So in some cases, companies you know, might want to know spend by customer and they need to have these cost allocation segments. Uh, and that's super trivial in our application. It's been created to be customized to exactly, uh, to capture exactly the information you require and to report in exactly the information that is important to your business. So Jesse, I'm not too sure who, if you or Jolene have been uh, getting questions, but I think this is a great opportunity to uh, uh, to ask everyone if they have any kind of questions, uh, submit them through, and I think Jolene and uh, and Jesse are both moderators for that. Thank you, Stanton. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar, and we'll give that a minute in case any come through. And just to remind everyone, we do have subject matter experts here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. And Stanton, we do have a few that came through during the presentation. The first being, how does invoice data flow into Sage? Okay, thanks, Jolene. Um, so integration um, specifically from data that's uh, contained with Fraction uh, is super important. And we touched briefly on the structure, but one of the things that we do like to focus on is making sure that um, we provide those integration points through the APIs itself. So with Acumatica, we utilize the inbuilt Acumatica integrations to pass all the information data um, that includes all the custom fields that are required back into Acumatica. And those use sort of REST APIs and that's a fairly well established uh, um, way of communicating. With Sage 100, it's slightly different. Um, we avoid where possible any kind of database calls. Uh, either pushing data in or pulling data from because it's inherently brittle and then we are very, very concerned about the integrity of our clients' databases. So for the Sage platforms, we use BOI as our primary mechanism for uh, pushing data back into Sage 100 to populate. And all the information is populated back. So it's obviously what you would expect from uh, invoices. It's all the vendor information, the cost allocation codes, the item descriptions. But a lot of our Sage 100 and our Sage 300 customers use uh, add-ons. And those add-ons can be job costing. They can be uh, projects. Uh, they can be asset registers that require fixed assets to be communicated uh, in a slightly different way. And we accommodate all of those features. So BOI, APIs, uh, REST APIs for Acumatica are our ways of pushing that invoice data back and the whole data set back into the target ERP system. Great, we have another. Can I see actuals from Sage? Yeah, so the uh, actuals and the budgetary information are pulled uh, and, and obviously it's Sage, I'm not too sure if it's Sage 100 or 300, but I'll, I'll talk to the generic around that. Um, it, when we configure our Fraction uh, Connect client environment, we go extract obviously all the GL codes and associated that uh, with, with all of that, the actuals uh, and the budgetary information. And we overlay that in that graph that I showed, which uh, was around what is the budgetary impact. We're showing actuals there. We're layering information on top of Fraction that may not yet exist 
in uh, in Sage, like what are our commitments, what are the value of the potential orders that might touch that GL code. And one of the criticisms of a lot of systems is that they don't have visibility of any kind of journals or uh, those kind of entries that go outside of the PO or outside of the AP. But we clean that up very nicely. So on a regular basis, and typically that can be every five, 10 minutes or uh, more frequently or less frequently scheduled basis, we go extract all that actual information. So any journals, any kind of information uh, that has bypassed our system or bypassed the traditional subsystems like AP would then be visible to us. Uh, so the answer is yes, absolutely. Actuals uh, are presented and available within Fraction. And I think that that's the key to what we've been talking about this whole time is getting real-time data into people's hands so they can make those data-driven decisions. Um, that information becomes critical to making that choice. And so if you weren't integrated to your AP, you know, obviously not having that information is bad. And the vis not having the visibility from an AP dep department's perspective is horrible. You know, you're, you're dealing with things 30 or 45 days later when invoices are finally showing up. It's very tough to make good decisions when you don't have that data at your fingertips at all times. Great, and we have another one. How do we get GL structures and vendors into our ERP system? So, uh, once again, that also forms part of the Connect environment. And if you look at the data set that's required to build up a requisition uh, in a highly automated way, we need to pick up a couple of things from uh, the underlying accounting system. They include uh, vendors, they include, um, and I'll call them sort of GL or budget structures. GL codes are obviously one of those budget structures. But in some cases, there might be other ones uh, that either come from the accounting system all come from other third-party systems. So Fraction has the ability to combine data sets from other external systems into a requisition as well. Uh, and and once, ago, once again, those are timed, so they're slightly asynchronous, which means that if you create a GL account structure in Sage 100, it doesn't immediately appear in Fraction, but it appears as close as possible, and usually there's a minute or two delays. And that is one of the, um, sort of negatives, I suppose, of an API environment. An API environment is inherently much more structured. It's absolute best practice for integrating. But it does mean things are done in a slightly asynchronous environment. It means that if you create a new GL code, it only appears uh, in Fraction uh, Spin Management Solution uh, a couple of minutes later. But for most people, that's more than adequate. And the same applies for a, a vendor. There might be as much as a two, three minute lag from the time a vendor is created in Sage uh, to where it appears within a fractured environment. But for all intents and purposes, that's as close to real time as practical and just best practices when we're talking about communicating between cloud-based systems. Uh, and it's completely automated. There is no manual intervention. That data uh, just applies. We have a couple more that have come through. How do you manage approve, approval levels as these are not tied to the ERP? Yes, so that's, uh, you're 100% right to have asked that question is the ERP systems are unlikely to have any kind of delegation or authority levels. Uh, they're just absolutely unknown. So Fraction has its own approval authorization uh, levels that are maintained in our delegations or approvals engine. That routing engine is actually very powerful. It can work on very simple uh, routing, for instance, departmental routing environment, uh, the one that I showed in the demo. Uh, or it could be tied to a GL code or an element of the GL code or a project or a customer uh, or any of those uh, uh, combinations. So it's, it's super powerful. And within each one of these approval workflows, you can set uh, individual limits that are uh, based on the spending activity and are whatever is linked into your delegation authority. So uh, approval manager X will, for instance, have an approval limit that says, okay, he or she can approve up to $100 for expense claims, maybe $300 for CapEx uh, or $500 for CapEx and for general operating uh, spend $250 at which point it escalates to the next manager. Now, if you're a very, very, very large organization, uh, in some cases, if you're certainly in the thousands of employees, 
you might want to extract some of that data from whatever directory service that you're running. And once again, Fraction is all about tight integrations and APIs, and so we natively support uh, OAuth for authentication, Active Directory that might, depending on how you configured it, contain that information. But for the bulk of our customers, I would say that they configure and manage the approval limits within Fraction, and it's uh, supported in that way. And we support concepts like dual approvals, approval groups, uh, approval levels where multiple parties can intervene. And obviously, you know, what happens if a manager is either way, alternative approvers, that's all embedded into the system. Great, and we have one last one. Is project integration possible? Absolutely, so projects, uh, job costs, um, jobs, are all integrated into Fraction. If they are available natively in your ERP system, so for instance, if you're running Sage 100 with job costs, then yes. If you're running a third-party product uh, that has these concepts, uh, but they are not necessarily part and parcel of um, the ERP system, you might have a third-party project management solution or asset management solution, and Sage isn't aware of this uh, application, then we can still store that information and pass it through to an application. It's not necessary that the only target integration is uh, your Sage platform or your Acumatic platform. It could be other apps, but for those people who uh, have these systems sitting on top of uh, the existing ERP, you know, Sage 100, Sage 300, projects and job costing are all supported. Wonderful. That's phenomenal timing. I think, uh, Jolina, this is one of the better timings that we've had for a while. <laughs> yes, it was perfectly timed. Thank you so much, Stanton and Jesse, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. For more information on Fraction, please check out our website at swktech.com and click on Fraction under the Procurement Software section in the Products tab. Thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you guys, really appreciate your time uh, today and I hope it's been super helpful.